Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture uh, of PHP. So this is a uh, very short lecture. We are going to discuss uh, uh, the chapter number 6 of our textbook in this lecture. Now this lecture is about uh, how to test and debug a PHP application. Now you might have already uh, worked with other programming languages and you might have worked that how can you test your program once you write your program and how you can debug it so uh, so some of the techniques you might already know and some of the techniques we'll discuss here and then you know some people have their own you know way of uh, debugging the program as well so whichever way you feel comfortable so you can debug your program so today uh, we are going to discuss uh, what are the common kind of errors and where do we, need, we normally make mistakes in our code and how can we actually uh, uh, rectify our error so we can also we will also see what is the difference between testing and debugging so i will see that how to test and debug php applications how to trace the execution of php application with the echo statements and uh, you know if you are using that means how can we set breakpoints step through code observe the changes and use the stack trace now uh, how to distinguish between testing and debugging uh, that will also discuss how to distinguish between syntax, runtime, logical errors and we'll also see how can we use the breakpoints and stepping through the code when you are using the NetBeans. Now starting with the errors, so there are three main kind of errors that can occur. We have the syntax errors, the runtime errors and the logical errors. Now the syntax errors are when you do not follow the syntax of a programming language. So every programming language has some kind of defined syntax which you have to follow otherwise the program is not compiled. For example let's suppose if you are talking about PHP so the variables they start with the dollar sign so you have to you know start with dollar sign or you have uh, uh, you need to end a statement in PHP by a semicolon if you do not do that that will be syntax error and then there are lot of other syntax errors that are common between different kind of uh, Languages, so we'll see a few syntax errors later on. So you might be familiar with you know syntax errors uh, previously. So every language might have a different kind of syntax. For example, we have a language Python which does not use uh, the semicolon uh, at all. So th there is no problem. If you use semicolon, it is okay. If you do not use, then even then it is okay. But in, in PHP we have. Then similarly for variable declaration there could be different rules as well. So you need to follow the syntax of the language otherwise it will give you syntax error. Now these are the errors which are the easiest to spot. So if you are using uh, an integrated development environment like NetBeans in that case the most of these applications automatically tell you about the syntax error because the syntax is already you know defined so if you do not follow it it will tell you okay that there is some kind of mistake there. Although uh, it may not exactly tell you what kind of mistake it is. It may give you some kind of hint, so you may be able to find, and it will also point out where are where the mistake is, and you can rectify it before actually compiling your program. The second kind of errors we have are the runtime errors. Now these are the errors that you do not find, uh, and are not uh, actually reflected by the uh, the the the, uh, the ID you might be using. But when you run your program, during the output, it will not run, it will give you some kind of error, it will not execute. Now, in the case of runtime errors as well, uh, mostly the NetBeans or any other ID you might be using does give you some kind of warning. Although it is not an error, but it may give you a warning that, you know, there is some problem here. So you may see into it whether, you know, you need to modify it or not. In some cases you may want to ignore the warning if you think it does not really make any difference but in other cases the warning may actually be very important and uh, you uh, it may help you to actually fix the runtime errors as well. So runtime error could be let's suppose you have a variable suppose variable a which is uppercase and when you use it you use it as a lowercase somewhere so in that case uh, while you are uh, writing your program it will not be considered a syntax error but it is a runtime error. During running, it will tell you that uh, you know this variable that you were trying to print or trying to access does not actually exist. So it will give you an error while the execution of the program. So that is called what runtime error. So syntax error would be if you're writing in NetBeans, it will tell you okay this is the error, 
run time error when you you know for example run the PHP code and you have uh, your um, uh, suppose your uh, you have uh, a PHP application that is open in a web browser and you give some kind of input but rather than giving you the output it gives you some kind of error so that will be the runtime error for example a box might be uh, accepting uh, on integral inputs and you might specify string input so inside the code the operations might be designed as per integral input but if you have specified string it may not work so that could be one of the problems so it could be one of the runtime errors then the last is the logical error so what is the logical errors in the case of uh, logic uh, errors uh, these are the errors that are difficult to find so you will not have anything in the id you will not have anything in the output output would be there as well but you may not be calculating or doing things properly so the output may still not be right so nothing wrong in the code nothing wrong in the execution but the output is not right that means the logic you have applied to develop your application or program that logic might be wrong somewhere so that is actually called the logical error for example, we have an example here, so product is on calculator. So this application is running fine, there was no syntax error, there was no runtime error as well. We provided the inputs and it gave us the output, but it actually has a logical error. What is the error? So you could see product is guitar, that is fine. Price is $3.99 and you are getting 10% discount, which is actually 39.9. So 33.399.00, so you will be getting 39.9 discount. So that means you need to subtract this value from this one and get the discounted price. But you see the price, discounted price you are getting, that is actually 400 and something. So this is actually wrong. So rather than subtracting, you are actually adding the value. That is why it is actually, instead of showing the, uh, the, the discounted price, the value has been added. So it is showing you the larger value rather than smaller value. So here the code is fine everything, but the logic was wrong. So there was something wrong there. So that's why you know you have to look into the actual output whether the output is you know correct as well or not so if you think okay your program is running fine it is okay so that is not the case you need to look into the actual values as well whether the values are right or not so generally the rule is when you develop an application try with a lot of values all the values that you think the user might you know give as input those values which are valid and even those values which are an invalid to see how would your program behave in different kind of values and then you can write your code to tackle all those scenarios and um, for those scenarios which are you know right in that case the output should be right if it is not right then that means there may be something wrong logically wrong in your code then you might have to fix it so there are two kind of things one is the testing the other one is debugging now debugging and testing are different so in the case of testing you write your code and then you run it um, and after that you find out you know what the error is so in the case of testing normally you find all the errors before the application is put into um, find out before the application is put into production while the goal of dubbing is to fix all the errors before the application is um, before the application is put into uh, uh, a production so here you are finding the errors here you are fixing the errors so in the case of testing you do not be basically you know go through all the code and everything you write it down and then you say okay it is completed and then you see the output whether it is okay or not so you basically before sending it you test you basically you know run it and see okay is there any error and then you find out the error okay there is error and after that you will be able to send it so you basically test your application. In the case of debugging, you do not do that. So you do not go through all the code actually. In the case of debugging, before actually testing, you first, you know, go through the code and fix everything and, and then after that you test. And once you test, even if, then if it is wrong, then you can debug your code again. So debugging basically means that uh, you have to go line by line from the code and find out all the fix all the errors and after that, you know, test it it is always easier to debug rather than test because if you are testing you may have written for example hundreds of lines of code and the output may not be right in that case it would be very difficult to actually find out where the error is in the case of debugging you actually go part by part so in that case it becomes easier to actually locate where the error is in smaller programs you can test it and find out and fix the error but in the case of debugging 
you can actually fix the error before you know application is put into production so there are three test phases so check the interface to make sure it works correctly so if you are making for example a web application you will see okay does it look okay in, in terms of its look then uh, test the application with valid input to, take, to, to make sure the results are correct so once you think you know the layout is okay it is giving you all the input that you require and you know all the settings are fine then you would like to see whether it gives you the correct output so you will give the input data to see whether the output is correct or not so when you are giving the valid input data you will not be trying only one or two three inputs so you will try you know different kind of values the lowest value maximum value all of those so just to make sure that it works in every kind of scenario and then you will test the application with invalid data or unless expected actions so you will actually try to make your application fail you will give the invalid data and see what kind of output you get how does it behave in uh, this kind of scenario and then you will try to find out uh, how can you actually tackle in these scenarios so if you already have written code for tackling with all of the in, in all the invalid inputs so that means it should give you the required error that you might have you know put into your code if you have not then in that case uh, you might want to you know re rewrite your code so that it handles those errors uh, or invalid data correctly so we have an example of a php code that contains syntax errors so for example we have three syntax errors here we have the if condition if list price is equal to null now that is the first error that we have we know the equal to operator is called the assignment operator so it is used to check only what it is used to check it is used to actually assign the value of one variable to another so for example it will assign null to list price and we are not trying to do that here we are actually trying to check whether list price is null or not so when you are using equal to for equality so you have to use double equal to for checking the equality as you can use triple equal to as well now similarly here we have an error you are again using the single equal to which is the assignment operator and not the equality operator so for equality you have to use double equal to so this was the first error the second error we have we have an error here variable which is a string it starts with double quotes and it is ending with single quotes now we know we can start a string in php either by double quotes or single quotes but if you start with double quotes you have to end with double quote if you start with single quote you have to end with single quote you cannot start with double quote and end with a single quote so you have to be careful about that and the last error is in the else you have what you have written error here but after that you did not write a semicolon so whenever you write any statement in php you have to end it with a semicolon so that is the third error that you have now if you write your php code which has error in that means it would automatically tell you so if you have written your code here so you have a right hand side bar here and a left hand side bar here the right hand side bar just tells you that there is error so if you have a red dot here at the top that means there are errors in your code if you have green dot that means there are no errors if you have a yellow dot that means there may be warnings now where is the error or where are the warnings you will see there are, there are a lot of lines here so these actually show where the warnings are if you click on any one of those they will directly take you to the corresponding error or corresponding warning so this is what you have on the right hand side on the left hand side also it shows you the warning or errors and sometimes it gives you some kind of suggestion as well but on the left hand side if it is an error it shows you this uh, red sign if it is a uh, warning it may show you this kind of sign warning sign and if you if it gives you some suggestion so it may be you know a kind of bulb here which will show you that you know you might want to improve it now you can click on any one of these on the left hand side and it will give you the details now here the details that you might get these will be the you know uh, the suggestions from the id the suggestion may not be right for example it will tell you what the error is it may not probably be correct all the time it may give you a hint that what might be the error and that end may help you to actually find out what the error could be the ones on the right hand side they take you to the error but they do not tell you what the error is on the left hand side they give you a hint what kind of error it could be or it may give you some suggestions now 
when you click on any one of the, these right hand labels it does take you to the uh, it does take you the error or um, it does take you to the error but it may not take you to the exact location it might be uh, normally off by one line and normally if there is an error on one line it shows that there is an error on the next line so if one line line is highlighted as if there is an error in that line so you can always look one line before that and there might be error in that so it is not always a you know the it gives you the correct uh, location so i'll go give you an example in the action that means so suppose uh, uh, if I remove this semicolon from here. So you see as soon as I remove the before I remove the semicolon. So you see there is nothing here. So I do have some kind of you know uh, warnings here. It, it, it does give you some kind of hints here as well on the right hand side. It is telling me that there is unnecessary delimiter. And, uh, and at the top it is giving me that there is one warning in the code. That is why it is yellow. If I remove this warning then after that you know this will be turn into green and if I go here then it's, it gives me that the HTML version of the code cannot be determined so it is giving me kind of a you know help that you can uh, uh, HTML error checking is disabled because it is uh, you know PHP and inside uh, you know PHP we might have some HTML code so that is what is telling us that the HTML uh, uh, error checking might be disabled for this and here also it is giving us uh, okay introduce the variable this was uh, only because I had clicked here so that is why it was giving me this kind of hint okay so now if I remove this you see that by removing this I got an error so this is red and this is with all the error is here the line is shown here so it is telling me syntax error unexpected variable statement so it is giving me some kind of hint if I click here so it takes me to the error so if I click here it takes me to the error now it takes me to the next line after the error although the error is here although the error is here but it is you know showing that the error is in this line because we did not end this one so it is going to the next line there is no uh, you know space uh, these two lines are not separated by semicolon so that is why it is giving you error in this line that these two are actually combined so it is giving you error here if I go here it gives me you you know all the details it is gives it is a uh, you know showing a lot of things here syntax error it is unexpected variable statement so this is unexpected because it was expected a semicolon before the statement so that is why it is you know unexpected and uh, so if I go here it gives me if I just go on this line it gives me details if I go here and then if once this uh, you know comes if I click here so then it gives me what kind of you know options there are available and if I click on any, any one of these it might try to automatically fix the error sometime it works sometime it does not really work if it does not find the correct error then it may try to fix it some other way which you don't really want so I can simply put a semicolon here and then it will end another thing you might see once you know there is an error so it shows you a lot of warnings here as well it shows you lots of warnings here as well so sometimes it may show you a lot of warnings and a lot of errors but it may be that you have only one of the errors so always try to fix the last error first and once you fix that then all other uh, you know the, the, the uh, uh, errors might be might already be fixed and uh, well that actually depends on different programming languages so sometimes the last error could be because of the previous error so always try to find out what could be the error and then you know uh, rather than going through all the errors if you fix one by one one of the errors the other errors might already be fixed so for example if i do this so you see that all other warnings everything goes off so your code is actually correct now so this way you can use NetBeans to find out if there are any errors so what are the common syntax errors misspelling keywords so for example if you are using any keyword uh, what is a keyword so suppose we are using a keyword execute so this is a keyword bind value close cursor so these are some methods functions we have uh, in um, inside uh, so these are actually uh, the, the, these are not uh, the keywords but these are the methods defined by uh, the PDO objects which can be used by PDO objects so that is why uh, we have to use this method as it is now these are the keywords function global return so those which are you know shown in blue 
these are the keywords so for example if I instead of global I write this so you see that it gives me error so it has to be written as global so keywords misspelling keywords forgetting opening or curling parentheses brackets braces or comment character so in this case for example if I remove this so it will give me error because parenthesis did not uh, the curly bracket did not start but it ended here if I remove this also it will give me error so in this case you see it does not uh, always give you the correct error so if I click here then it might tell me okay that you know there may be something missing here but there is no hint here so for brackets you can always do what if I click here so the ending bracket for this one should be highlighted if it is not highlighted then that means it is actually missing so for example if I have a bracket here now you see if I click here both are highlighted this is the starting this is the ending but if you click here and the ending one is not highlighted that means it is probably missing so you can look for that for forgetting to end PHP statement with the semicolon we just saw that forgetting opening or closing quotation marks if you are writing a string not using the same opening and closing quotation mark if you start with the double quotes you have to end with double quotes if you start with single quotes you have to end with single quotes a problem with variable names misspelling or incorrectly capitalizing a variable name so if you use a variable name then you have to use exactly the same so if you misspell it it might give you runtime error later on using a keyword as a variable name now the keywords whenever you use they are automatically highlighted as blue so if it is blue that means it is a keyword and you should not use it as a variable the problem with the values so you may have a problem with the syntax problem with variable names or problem with values so not checking that value is the right data type before processing it so you might have a string value and you might be applying arithmetic operation on it, on it. so then it might be give you give you a you know a problem so you need to look into the value that you are applying the operation on using one equal to sign instead of two equal to signs when you are testing for equality so if you're using for equality if you are using an if condition then in that case make sure that you use the equality operator rather than using the sign met operator okay how can you uh, how can you actually you know, debug your code one of the way to debug your code is that uh, uh, you can actually run your code the whole code so uh, in that case uh, you might want to print the value of the variable at different locations to see what are the value, values of variables as the code is running so in this case you have to run the whole uh, uh, code again so it, it is similar to actually testing but except that rather than just testing the application you add quite a few lines just for you know finding out that what are the values of different variables at different locations so let's suppose if you have this application future value application where you are trying to predict the future value of investment depending on how many years the user has entered and what is the uh, uh, percentage uh, what is the percentage uh, uh, what is the interest rate percentage as well so you might not be getting the right value so that means there's something wrong you are doing so what you can do so let's suppose you are getting the values from the user so you can echo all those values to see whether the values are correct so for example future values investment sorry so you get investment from the user initially that is future value so you echo the future value as a string so this will be printed as it is and you combine it with what with the so you use the dot operator to combine and you combine it with the future value variable so the value of the variable will be printed br means now you will go to the next line after that and then you will print the interest rate years okay and then you will echo for loop for calculating future values so first you are printing what you are printing all the variable values then you have the uh, you know uh, you have the for loop here and then you move two lines to the next line and within the for loop you see when you are calculating the future value every time you go through the loop you print the value of i I just used to print that you know which year it is first year second year because I is basically you know uh, it is tell it tells you that which year you are in and then you can also print the value future value so that will tell you at what year what is the future value that you have got so let's suppose if we run this so this is what you will get in the output so although this is future value calculator but before that you will get all these values just to see just to check 
whether you are getting the right values or not. So for example, you have initial future value 10,000, interest rate is 5, years 5, and for loop for calculating the future value, so this is you know just running, and then you have a gap of one line, although it moves to the new line, then you have a new line, you have two new lines there. You could see that you had you know BR two times here. So that is why you were you know moved uh, one BR moves to next line, another BR moves to another next line. So that is why you have gap here. So first it prints the value i, that is one. After printing i, you move to the next line using BR. So you have i here and then you have future value. So it is telling me that after one year, the value goes to 6000. So you started with 10,000, interest rate was 5%. So you can find out what is the 5% of uh, uh, you know, 10,000 that will actually be, uh, this is 10,000, so 10% would be 1,000 and 5% will be 500. So that means after one year, you know, you should have, uh, you know, 1,000, uh, 10,000 and 500, but this is actually uh, giving you some other kind of value. Okay, so okay if she this uh, this interest rate might be actually the monthly interest rate so in that case you might have to calculate the value at the end of every month and see at the end of uh, one year if it is monthly what should be the value so i'm not sure what should be the value so you can calculate it yourself and then try to see whether you're getting the correct value of the first year or second year so is there anything wrong with the values here or is there anything wrong with the loop that is being calculated or Maybe the first value is right and after that we are not getting the correct values. So, uh, you know, what is wrong here that you can probably, you know, try to find out. Uh. So, in this case, you can actually, you know, echo or print values of variables at uh, different times and see what are the values in variables to see whether the values have been updated or, or uh, do you have the right values or you have the wrong values. Okay, next is uh, how can you actually use the breakpoint uh, for debugging your code uh, in any ID. So I'll give you an example of uh, how you can do it uh, in um, how you can actually do it in uh, in the P in, in the nut beans. But of course, all the IDs that you use in every ID, you have the option of uh, uh, debugging. So what is debugging? In, in when you are using debugging, you can actually insert the breakpoints. So breakpoints are when you want your compiler to actually stop at that point. And then you can see what is the output until that point and you see whether it is okay. And then uh, after that you can you know simply run rest of the code as well or after that point you can go through step by step as well. So it is your choice whether you want to go step by step or you want to directly jump to a breakpoint and see what is the output you get up until breakpoint and then uh, what is do you what do you get after the breakpoint or if after the breakpoint you want to go step by step so that is also possible you can do that as well so how can you insert a breakpoint so for using breakpoint inside uh, the uh, nut beans so not only you need the XAMPP you also need the uh, X debug as well within XAMPP so if you have used the XAMPP uh, you may not be able to debug program directly you might have to add uh, another uh, another file which is the xdebug and if you have installed it sometime it comes you know with the XAMPP if it is not so then in that case you might have to download the xdebug from the xdebug website and then you might have to add that into uh, into the PHP folder in, inside XAMPP and then you might have to make uh, one or two modifications as well regarding that xdebug so I already have installed it for you. You can you, you can do that if you uh, if you want to debug your code using this way. So for example, you could see that uh, okay, this is a debug file. Uh, this is a file where a deep breakpoint has been added that is shown. So if you write your code in uh, in PHP and open that in uh, NetBeans, so on the left hand side you will have the op option of inserting a breakpoint. So if you simply click. Uh, if you simply uh, right uh, sorry left click double right uh, double left click here on the left hand side so it will insert the breakpoint there so what is a breakpoint when you insert a breakpoint and you compile your code so
so it does not compile all the code it basically you know starts at the beginning does not compile and then you can you know click on a button it will go to the breakpoint until the breakpoint all the code will be executed then you can click again and then all the code after the breakpoint it will be executed or if you insert a breakpoint you can also you know go step by step as well throughout the code as well so let us try to see how we can actually do that so suppose uh, this is I have you know a simple code I have written inside a file so in this file I have declared a variable age is 17 and if age is greater than or equal to 18 you are allowed to vote else you are not allowed to vote so this is what uh, uh, needs to be executed suppose I say age is 19 so that means you are allowed to vote should be executed now if I want to add a breakpoint so I can add a breakpoint by using what simply going here anywhere where I want to add the breakpoint suppose before echo message I want to insert a breakpoint so I may want to for example uh, click here that is uh, your left click so you see that a breakpoint has been inserted and the line is red so that means breakpoint has been inserted and once you click here the some of the fields will be highlighted here. If I click here again, it will be removed. So, just a minute. I was already in the debug mode, so I had to cancel it, so I closed it. So now I'll go again. So if I click here, for example here, so just before, this is the breakpoint, so before that it will stop. And once I click here, then for running there are two options that you see so this is normally here that you do if you click here it will normally run the way the you know, project runs from the start till the end and if you click here then that means you want to debug your project so this is for debugging purposes so now if I click here so you see that it is running but it is waiting because I have inserted a breakpoint so not all the code is executed if the code was executed then in that case it will actually print that message there as well so now you see that it is into the debugging mode it is there so you could see that this is the current counter so it's currently the compiler is actually here and this arrow point that that we have here that actually tells us where your compiler is and then it also shows where your breakpoint is and here at the bottom it shows you that your breakpoint is at line 19 inside this file and call stack basically shows you that how many different files are actually called in this code we only have one file so then doesn't really, you know this one is only one file if you're including some other file here then in that case it will show you and these are all the global variables so you could see that we have cookies here we have the get array post array so sometimes you know you may be getting values from the user so you may want to see so for example in get and post it is telling us that in both of these arrays you do not have any value at this moment so this is actually empty so here you can actually see the uh, values of uh, the variables now if I want to run it so there are two ways one is I can go with this so that actually means it will simply go through the code till the breakpoint and execute it and when I run it again then it will go through the breakpoint and run rest of the code and then we have these options as well we have the first option which is step hour second option which is step into step out and run to cursor now normally we use these two to actually go through the code so for example we use the step hour if you want to go through the next line if you want to go line by line now if you want to go line by line you can also use step into so both of these are actually okay the difference is in the case of step hour if you are calling for example another function within one function in a code so if you go to step hour when it goes to the next function there also it will go line by line in that function as well but if you use step into then in that case if there is a line that go to this function and execute that in step into it will simply go execute all the function and then come back and go to the next line so in the case of step into it goes line by line in your code but not, not line by line if you are calling some other function uh, within your code 
but in the case of step uh, our it goes line by line even in the some other kind of uh, function that you may be calling in your own code so now if i click here first i'll try this if i click here continue so i am actually here at the top if i click on continue so it simply jumps here so you see that a variable age has been created the value of the variable age is 19 and then since the this condition was true age was greater than 18 so another variable has been created what is the variable name you are allowed to vote so messages you are allowed to vote so here you can ch check okay whether your program was running right or not you can check the values of the variables uh, you know using these variables and that will help you whether your program is right or not and after that if I click on run again so then you see now the program has stopped here so even if I go here so it is still waiting it has not printed anything because I am still at this line I haven't go to the next line if I click on this so then now it is at the breakpoint so now it has gone through the code so all the variables are finished the breakpoint is still there and then if I go here so I would see that it has completed the program you are allowed to vote so now you have gone through your code by using the debug mode using the breakpoint now you can do what uh, after you are done with it so you can you know simply stop the debugging mode because your debug session is still running so if you click here so after that it will tell you that your debug session has ended and then you can also remove this breakpoint as well if you want all right so either you can insert the breakpoint if you want to run your code directly up until breakpoint so then you can do that you by inserting breakpoint because once you go to the breakpoint after that you can go step by step using the step into so step ever as well if you want to go from the start line by line you don't want to go into the you don't want to declare any breakpoint because you don't want to stop any point you want to go line by line so breakpoint is actually useful when you have what when you actually have a, a breakpoint is useful when you uh, when you know that you know this portion of the code all of this the top few lines you know I know that these are okay I simply want to go there to this point and then check there before that you know there are some statements which do not uh, you know really mean something so then you can insert the breakpoint especially the breakpoint is useful when you have a very lengthy code so then if you want to go line by line it may take a lot of time you may not be interested so then uh, rather the, than using if the code is long then rather than using the step by step you can you know use what you can use the breakpoint but if the code is small you can also go uh, into the debug mode and go line by line as well so let us try to see how we can do line by line so you can click on this run so if this run actually runs the project if you click on this it goes to the debug mode so if you click here you see that although it goes to the uh, browser but it is uh, telling us it is waiting for the localhost and the debug session has started in the NetBeans using xdebug so although we are in this file but the debug session has started if I go here so now I can go line by line using either this or this so for example if I use tap power okay, so I go here so after this you have you know just the HTML and tag and all those so this was not the PHP code so it simply went to the uh, variable uh, where age is equal to 19 if I click again so now it goes here uh, it goes to the if condition here now let me try to see if I can view the output okay, let me see the output how can I enable the output I think I have disabled it okay, let me stop the debugging and enable the output uh, window Alright, actually I had minimized it, so I have just, uh, you know, maximized it again. So we can see variables, cost, take and breakpoints here. Now, uh, so we are at the first line, so we can go to the next line using the uh, step over. So you see it simply goes to the age, so I can go to the variables. So it simply goes to the age directly, because all of this is uh, not PHP code, this is HTML. Then I can step over again. So now 
as soon as I step over, uh, you know, to the next line, the variable age has been declared. So that is why you see that age is declared as 19 here. So that variable is now in the output. So you could see, okay, age is integer and it is getting value 19. If I step into if, so at this moment it is evaluating the value of if. So now if I click this, that value is evaluated. So it has checked that this is actually true. So that is why it went inside. If this was not true, then instead of going here, it would actually jump here. So you would know, okay, there's something wrong with the if condition. It should have, you know, executed to this line, but it has actually gone to the else. Now this was true, so that is why it goes to, it went to message. And then if I go here, so now you see inside else it does not go. Since this was true, so it directly jumps after the else here. And now message has been given the value, that is you are allowed to vote. And after that I can go step, one step here. So I'm into the body and after that, once the variables are done, so that means the code is finished. So if I go here, so you would be able to see you are allowed to vote, that is printed. Now I can do it again by using another value, suppose if I use age 17, if I save it, so I have to end the debug session, so that is ended. So now if I run it again using this uh, debug project, so if I run it again, so you see this will be waiting. If I go back and now I have to go line by line again, so I can use this now. So you see I go to age 17. I go to next line, age is 17, it is evaluating the if condition. If I go to next line, so you will see that if condition is not true, so it will go to else, it will not go to message. So you see it directly jumps to else. Uh, and since if is not true, so automatically it goes to the else because it knows that the else is the default, so it should go to the else. And this is the value of message that it should give. So if I click again, so message is given the value, you are not allowed to vote. And then I can go line by line again. Now the code is finished. And then you could see that you are not allowed to vote. That is printed. So this way you can actually debug your program. Uh, so by using the breakpoint, and you will be able to see the variables value as you go through the code. And if you don't want to use the breakpoint, you want to go step by step, you can do that as well. And uh, okay, so uh, the stack is basically if you, it tells you that how many uh, files you may have. So if you have multiple files, you have multiple, you know, files here. So in that case, it will tell you that all of these files are actually there. So for example, in this case, it is telling you that you have category DB and within this probably, you know, the product manager index.php file uh, might be, um, you know, this file might be calling this one. So that is why it is actually showing this way. So we are into the product manager index.php. That is the file. So uh, this file index.php actually calls this category DB as well. So that is why it is actually showing this way. So this is in call stack. If you are calling some other files within one file, so those will be shown here. For us, we are using a simple value, so it was showing us that we only have one file. So this is how you can debug your code. So in this uh, you know chapter, what we have discussed, what are the common errors that you have? How can you test by using the echo statements? How can you debug using the breakpoint? And also going step by step through the code. So you can do that not only for PHP, if you are using some other kind of language and developing some other application, even for that also you can debug your code by going line by line through your code. Okay, so I hope it will be clear to you if you have any questions. So just let me know during the question answer session and I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much.